Hi everybody, Anthony Samroth, International Therapist and Life Coach. Um, a while ago I put out a live stream called Good Grief. You can find it on my YouTube channel if you type my name in. And I wanted to speak a bit about, I guess, some developments in my own grieving process and the way that I've approached it and some of the things that I've been learning from that really recently from turning in because sometimes I experience a part of myself comes up that feels a deep sadness real sad and it feels really ancient and um since I've made my last video on grieving and how to do it um given some tips for doing that uh, that's really been on my mind and become very apparent to me that this this part is really deeply sad and so I've tried to give it more attention and just observe those feelings in my body when I'm lying in bed in the morning or or in the evening and giving it that kind of attention is pretty good especially if you can find a, a location in your body associated with that but I was wanting to deepen that process and see if there was something that I could do to to get closer and to get some resolution and in fact when I was journaling I was journaling about this part and thinking you know what is it that this part needs to heal and just like that the first word that came into my head was closure and I you know that's a here I need closure it sounds like such a cliche but I didn't really know what that meant so I closed my eyes and I looked inward and I said well, you know, how would I get closure on this? And the part said, talk to me. And I was like, okay. Well, I was surprised by that. And this is the important thing to like trust the process of asking yourself and your intuition. Because um, I was surprised about it because, you know, when you're sad, you want to talk. You don't want someone to talk to you. But I took it as a cue and I said, well, you know, I've tried to feel around inside myself and say, what do you want me to talk to you about? Um, and I guess um, I just asked, I kept on digging and the part more or less told me that it was sad that it was never really taken seriously when it was growing up. And I had visions of, you know, say sitting me now with myself, with my younger self as a child beside the piano and um, showing my older self my songs or my projects, things that I wrote and um, it wanted, it said, uh, it wanted part people around that were curious about my emotional world and and I thought, you know what, um, all, I, I always have a, the reason why this is difficult is I always have a part that tells me I like my life, you know, and I do, I love my life. Um, and But that will get in the way of the grieving process because every time I try and tune in to what I'm sad about, I have this part that comes in that says, yeah, but life's great. You know, if, if things had gone the other way, you wouldn't be doing this and you wouldn't be doing that. And that's valid as well. That's valid and it's true. But it's getting in the way so of me listening to the sad part. So I had to ask that part that wants to reassure me to move out the way so I could really listen to this part. And it said, uh, and, and that was the risk here because when it said, I wanted people to be interested in my emotional world and take me seriously. I'm finding myself thinking instantly, well, I'm interested in you. And, and you know, that's true as well. But if you've watched my last video called Don't Bright Side Me, again, you can find it on my YouTube channel. You'll see why that's not really an effective thing to say in all circumstances, because it's consoling. Consoling isn't always as effective as offering understanding. And this is something that's kind of hard to do in the inner world because someone else can offer you understanding. But when you're looking inside, you're, you've got a whole bunch of things going on. One part wants to console you. One part wants to take you seriously and listen to you. So anyway, I was managed to say, I will take you seriously. And at least now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all yours now. I'm, I'm here to listen to you. And what it wanted me to do was to picture the life I might have had if some of these things that I regret not pursuing had come about. 
And, you know, you might start thinking, you know, what's the point in that? Like, I like my life now. Like, why? And I didn't know what it was either. But I, I kind of just went away with my imagination. And I forgot all this, forgot all about this part for a while. And I just started imagining certain relationships going differently, certain career moves going differently. What if I pursued this instead of that? And, and, and I... But I actually made a vision of a life in my head that was better than the life I have now because I'm very inclined to say whenever I try and think how things might have been, there's a part of me that's very inclined to go, to be honest, even if that thing had gone well, you didn't really have the resourcefulness to make the most of it. And I, I believe that's true. You know, I've learned from my own life the resources that I needed. And if I'd got the life I wanted, maybe I wouldn't have had the resourcefulness to deal with it. But I imagined it in a context where I did have that resourcefulness and I learned about it. And suddenly after maybe five to 10 minutes of this visualization, I realized that I'd forgotten all about the part that asked me to create this vision. So I tuned back into it and I said, how are you? And it was like, I feel a lot better. I was like, I was like in fact, I didn't even say that. It was just subliminal. I, I knew it felt better. And all it said to me was, I just wanted to take be taken seriously. I just wanted to be taken seriously. And then I knew that that part, this part of the grieving process was com complete because the reason why I needed to take that vision and make it a real thing and try and imagine the life I didn't have was instead of always saying, oh, but things are just great now, you know, I've, I, I like my life now, things are going in a good direction. That Imagine, you know, you were upset and you said to someone all those things and they just came in and said, well, you know, you've got a pretty good life now. You wouldn't really feel like you were being taken seriously. So if you want to deepen your grieving process, take five or ten minutes aside and just sit um, on the bed, or I, I, you can sit cross-legged like a Buddhist, like a meditator, and just feel into your emotions, feel into your sadness, and take it seriously. And any previous, any voices that come in and intercede and try and bright side you, just ask them to step aside. You don't need to be mean. You don't need to say, I shouldn't be thinking that. Just say, just practice your mirroring. Say, right, so you're feeling sad because X, because you didn't get the attention you needed. You didn't, and, you know, work up to saying, well, what can I do for you now? And maybe a little visualization will help. Now, if you found this video helpful, please share it. Uh, I know that uh, you will get something out of sharing it. Um, you know, uh, uh, we, if you take it serious, it shows your unconscious that you take it seriously. If you, not only if you practice, but if you share the video, and if you would like some one-to-one -one help deepening your grieving process, I'm available for counselling and coaching. So send me a quick message. You can email me at frequency. Uh, be yourself and love it. Anthony at be yourself and love it dot com. That would be the best email address to get me at. Antony at beyourselfandloveit.com. Thanks for tuning in.